You're not in this video. Nobody uh, asked. There we go. Nobody asked to listen to that. Oh, sorry. I, I usually I have my headphones on. But Fucking rude. Welcome to Jeremiah Creek. I am Dave Haynes right here. And that's Paul Garlington. I can't believe right that there. little thing can catch both of us in the same frame. Yeah, it's hard to believe, isn't it? Yeah. And those two guys. Yeah, that's all the wanted criminals in the background. <laughs> all right, so right off the bat, we were like talking about something before. Okay. So there's two there's two things. There was the uh, phone autocorrect thing. Yeah. And my car. So let's okay. uh, let's start with the the, the 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 quicker one first. The autocorrect thing. Yeah. It's were, driving me nuts. Because you talk about how you type. Okay. So I I. Everybody's te everybody texts it. No one sends emails. No one calls. No one no one writes letters anymore, Dave. Everyone texts. Oh. So I'm texting people all the time. And I swear to God, I spend more time correcting my text than I do actually texting. It's harder to type a word and then re I have to retype it like four times because but, autocorrect keeps changing it. But when, like on mine, when you type out a word, uh, it gives you like the choices of what it's going to autocorrect. Does yours do that? I mean, maybe. Because w once you, right, once I'm, I'm going to text you right now. Once you hit the word that you want to, you want it to be. The next time, it'll automatically give you that word. Like for mine, I don't know why. When I bought this phone, you couldn't swear. It would autocorrect to not swear words or whatever, and then you had to like pick the swear word at one time. See, now I'm trying to do it. And it won't work. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, I can't make a mistake. I have a question. Uh, uh, I, I, have an, I, have, I have a question about the, my phone. I love my phone, right? Weird but fucking phone. The one thing is, is that it has this case. Um, I bought this case, and it's it's great, very protective and everything. But I have a hard time if, if my phone is folded, and because my fingers are so fucking giant, of uh, hitting anything on the humble brag right side of the keyboard. So like if if I try to hit a one, it'll automatically hit two. It won't hit the one because this. Uh, you know what you need? This little frame right here. You know what you, we need to invent? Huh. Uh, this little frame finger thing. caps. So it's a cap that goes on your finger that just makes it a smaller finger. On That's the end. a good idea. Yeah. A good idea. You just wear it on the end of your finger, and yeah. then you can text. And if you want, you can hit a little button and it'll start vibrating. But right. I mean. <laughs> Um, that's for a different purpose. <laughs> that's for a different well, usage. Hey, every, multitasking. Multitasking. Is, but anyway, uh, so my question is this: I love this phone, but this phone is eighteen hundred dollars. Right? Good I'm God! Terrified of of breaking this phone, so I bought this hardened case, and I like the case. Is it an Otter case? What is the brand Otter? No, it's not an Otter case. The Otter case was too big; it wouldn't fit in my, any of my car holders. So, uh, but my question is this. These things are supposed to be built nowadays with Gorilla Glass so that they don't break if you drop them. Yeah. And should I, you know, should I not use the case and take the chance and being able to use it? Is know? it insured? Yeah, it's insured. But, you know, it's always deductible. No. Make your life easier. Yeah. You know what? No, don't. How often do you crack your phone screens? I... I have I personally have not cracked the phone screen. Okay, I want to stop you right there, years. and we're going to go on a tangent. All right, my kids, however, when you say I personally, what are you inferring that there are times when you speak impersonally? That there are other persons that I pay for that are cracking their screens off. I know, but if you just say I, you don't have to say personally because it implies that you're talking about yourself and not. About, sorry, it's it's a word thing. It makes me nuts. It's like period of time. I want to punch everybody that does it. It's like literally when you're not talking literally. Literally, I can let go. I even literally though flew to the moon. Even though it's figuratively, I can let literally go. I literally go. flew off the handle. I literally don't care if you say literally. I don't care. That drives me to, or concerning. That but drives me to. concerning is you know it's just a, or I was impacted by that. Oh, you son <laughs> of a bitch. 3 p.m. in the afternoon. I want to kick somebody's ass if they say that. Oh god, yeah. All right. Yeah. Period of time though, for some reason that phrase. Um, I mean, some guys want to defend their mother's honor. 
other people want to fight you if you say something bad about America. For me, it's a period of time. <laughs> <laughs> or in print, if you don't use the Oxford comma, because Jesus fucking Christ, what kind of a child are you? What's the Oxford comma? The Oxford comma is, is when you use a comma after... It, like, let's say there's three things to wrote. Like you say, red, blue, and green. Some people use it so it's red, comma, blue, and green. Not... But that's incorrect. Right. It's red, comma, blue, comma, and green. And that second comma is the Oxford comma. Yeah. Yeah, because Oxford right. determined that that's the better way to communicate because it is. You know, I always, for some reason, that's a, that's a thing that when I'm writing, I do... And it's a natural. I catch it. Yeah, whatever. I, I it was drilled into me as a kid. I don't remember why. But one thing that I notice that always drives me nuts is people putting punctuation outside of quotation marks. That drives. <laughs> yeah, I mean there, there is a, there is a reason why you do that, but even that reason is not good enough to do it. Or, like there's a rule, but fuck that rule, because it looks stupid every single time. Yeah. Or 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 putting punctuation outside of parentheses which means you ended a sentence with a parentheses which you can't speak parenthetically and finish a thought okay that sometimes you have to put sometimes I suppose, you have sometimes, to put the period on the outside if the if it's actually parenthetical within a thought so you if you have a sentence going on and then within that sentence you finish with a parenthetical thought then you do put the period on the outside of the parentheses. Right. I understand why you're supposed to do it. It just it drives me nuts because I don't think you're supposed to finish a sentence with a parenthetical it is, thought. It is poor writing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so that was our phone thing. That's I just wanted to get that out of the way. Yeah. But, but Auto connect. Duck I was going to tell you about my car. Cucks. I was telling you about my car before we started. I can't. So. I can't. And then I got a call. Uh, why don't you call. buy... Okay, good. tell us. All right, so first we're of all, listening, Dave. I had, yeah. <laughs> hey, speaking of that, the new Frasier is starting next week. And another tangent. <laughs> but the, uh, all right, so a couple weeks ago, I started hearing a thump. And I, the way I described it to you was, was right. Uh, it started off whenever I would be slowing down, like if you're approaching a red light that suddenly turns green. Uh, so you take your foot off the brake and it hit the gas. All of a sudden, I, I hear thump, thump, and and it would run fine. Car, car ran fine. And then I uh, would be like at a stop sign or something. And you know how if you have a, a space so you, you accelerate fast from a stop. All of a sudden, about a week ago, I started hearing that. Thump, thump. And then, and I was worried. It was, uh, it didn't seem like it was anything in the transmission because the car would run fine whenever I was driving it. I would just hear the occasional thump. So I took it into the mechanic and told him. Before I did that, I looked it up on Google. And uh, and it, it said that was most likely a, a U-joint or a loose motor mount, which is not a big deal. I feel like a loose motor mount's a pretty big deal. It's not expensive to fix. Okay, that's what you mean. And uh, it's, it's, it's a big deal if you don't get it fixed. It becomes a big deal. Right, right. Yeah. So I brought it in the mechanic, and I told the mechanic, the mechanic said, it sounds like it's a loose motor mount joint right away. And uh, he goes, so that's not a big deal. So then he calls me yesterday. He goes, Listen, I got some bad news. He goes, I, I got to do some more tests on this thing. But for some reason, it's not switching into four-wheel drive. I said, it's all, it's it's always on four-wheel drive. And he said, yeah, but it's not, it's only it's only running two-wheel drive. It might be your transfer case. Uh, Why goes, would you have a transfer case if it's always on four-wheel drive? Is it permanently four-wheel drive or you just choose to ride four-wheel no, drive? No, it's permanently four-wheel drive. And, Why? But there is still a transfer case. I looked it up because i that's the first thing I thought. It was, wait a minute. It's an the car. It's a 2000 Jeep Commander, an always-on four-wheel drive. And uh, so, uh, so I looked it up, and there is a transfer case, and there have you know been problems. And... And he goes, he goes, if it is a transfer, he goes, I got to check to make sure I got some more tests. If it is, I'll call you. We're going to probably be a lot cheaper to try to find one used. And I'll have to look around. And so I looked it up. Now, when I looked it up, it, it tells me, I think it tells me what the cost is for new. And it's uh, 2000 to $8,000 to repair it. Yeah. All right. So I have almost 200,000 miles on this truck. I love this truck. Yeah. But. But it's like an old dog. You have to, at some point, right, start thinking, okay, 
risk return, risk reward. You how need much to put money, it down. How much money do I keep putting into this car before? You need to take that 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 Jeep out to a lovely field and let it drive around one last time, <laughs> and then put a bullet in its engine. All right. But, but here's the thing. So I, I was telling this to my wife yesterday. I'm like, all right. At what point do we? Now we always knew we were going to get a new car, but our plan was to get a new car next year when we sold the house, and we were hoping to pay cash and not have payments. So, uh, you know, how much do how much do we willing to spend to keep this going for another year? Or so I was like, telling him, if, if he calls up and says it's two thousand dollars, we we're trying to figure out what is the cutoff point. Yeah, and that, and that's the thing. So two we, grand's not terrible. If if it, if it's two thousand dollars, let's say you you got a good deal on a car, you're, you're, you're I figured your two hundred fifty dollars would be your car payment. I hope. If we put a down payment, that's the hell. Shit, we're under it's attack. A, it's a this is a test of the National Wireless Emergency Weird. Alert System. Lupin, they found you. Uh. Wow. There is no emergency. The emergency, uh, you. do not head to your uh, your storm shelters at this moment. That was fun. Um, everybody's, everybody's phone in the fucking place. Yeah. Went up. Whose was first? I think mine was. Yeah. So now what do you who, win? You have to ask who's the last one to turn it off. There's... Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that guy was interesting. All hey, right. Buy a fucking Toyota. So the way I look at no, I'm not buying a Toyota why? Because I like Jeeps. I've had, Look, let me I've, tell you something. I've had Jeeps my Let me tell you something. Life. Everybody I know who owns a Jeep spends an incredible amount of money. It's like owning a Rolls Royce. You have to spend so much money fixing it all the time. What's the fucking point? Do you know how, do you know I how often... I have been very lucky with cars. Okay. No, you haven't. I have known you for a long time now, and you're lying. No, I'm not. You have been a terribly unlucky with cars. Your cars are always in the shop. Not my car. And when it is, it's usually something that's that's easy to fix. I haven't had right. any. I haven't. The last time I had a big, really huge car thing was I, I did have a Jeep Grand Cherokee, that the drive team went out, but it was still under warranty, and so it didn't cost me anything. Do you know how much money I've spent on my wife's Toyota and my Toyota and the Toyota we had previously, and the Toyota we had previously combined in major repairs? How much? Maybe a thousand bucks. All right. <laughs> but here's the thing. Do you know what we do to take care of them? Absolutely fucking nothing. <laughs> here's the thing. It costs more. They cost more. Yeah, because they're good. That's know. the point. You, you spend a little more money on a car that's built well, and then you don't have to fucking worry about it. I well, don't even change the oil, Dave. I, I'm telling you, I, 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 have, I, I love my Jeep. I, if I could get this thing going to 250,000 miles, that's the other thing. All right, so you have to figure out how much... We had to figure out how much how much is our cutoff. So two thousand dollars at two hundred fifty dollars a month is what? Eight You're months? asking me to do math. Eight months. I'm of, gonna need to call somebody in. Eight months of car payments. So if we can, I mean, do you start asking yourself to is it, if we can get it going for another twelve months with by spending two thousand dollars, you know, is it worth the the cost? Because I mean, I I is I love my Jeep. is very comfortable. I haven't had any, many problems with it. Why don't you go to a junkyard and, and just rip out a, what is it again? Your drive uh, a transfer case. Yeah, that's, a transfer case from a junkyard. Yeah, that's what he would do. Because I'm telling you right now, there's a lot of jeeps in a junkyard, so you won't have a hard time finding it. You know what? You won't find in a junkyard. There's another one. Toyotas. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. We're trying to figure out what to do, but I also started looking for another car. I found I found one I like. Uh oh. But it's Get an a, FJ, dude. No, it's a... God well, damn, they're great. It's a Jeep Gladiator. Okay. A Jeep Gladiator it's, with... Uh, it says, are you not entertained on the back, right? Jeep Gladiator with uh, one of those uh, push bars on the front. And it's got a light bar on the top. Does it have a, a winch? Bar on the push bar. Does it have right, a, winch? a winch? All right, yeah. that's important. And well, Because I've seen your driveway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no shit, right? You might need it. <laughs> but, uh, the, yeah, because the, the thing about the... Uh, uh, it would be great to Hang drive down the hills in Tennessee. Finally. By this time, we'd all be dead. So <laughs> A little bit late there. So, uh, uh, But it was, uh, it, it was interesting. So this is the first time since, since we bought the house in Tennessee that I've applied for a loan. 
And it's the first time I've ever applied for a loan by going to my bank app and just filling out the form. Because I just wanted to see if we would have a problem if we wanted to buy a car. And it's weird. Have you ever filled out a, a loan application? Yeah, you know that's going to go on your credit report. Just they asking. They said that. Yeah. They said that. And I, I'm like, well, you know, that's why. And that's why I never did it before. But you're a cop, Dave. Don't you guys have a secret fund you can just dip into and anytime you want to? I wish. I wish, man. But uh, what was interesting shake is... down some drug dealers, man. I filled out the form. And then it tells me, okay, if you go past this point, we're going to pull your credit. Just so you don't. Yeah. And uh, I'm like, okay, well, I'm getting pre-qualified. And uh, it was I, within like two minutes, I got the yeah. message back saying, yeah, you're pre-qualified up to this amount. Here's your rate. I'm like, whoa. whoa. And so I didn't do anything else after that because I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want her sending me a so check. So you're approved, right? I'm approved. So she like just it, Why not me. send you a check? You didn't have it sitting around. She just called me. She goes, have you bought the car yet or, or are you just looking? I go, no, we're just, I just, we're preparing the luck. And so it was. Uh, God damn it. If you don't get a Toyota, like, I'm going to be so mad at you. If I get if I get Andy, I'm gonna get that another Gladiator. Jeep. I have to take it for a test drive, though. You My friend in Alabama. We should take it for a test drive. We I, should take it for a test. Let's drive. Let's go take it for a test drive. Yeah, like on some. Let's go four wheel. Let's t bring it back, it's muddy as fun. hell, like dented a little bit. That would be <laughs> great. Where did you take it? Just you know, the park, Skokie, golf course. <laughs> By the way, they might be calling. <laughs> That's cool. No, if, if, but you got to put them on speaker if they do. <laughs> no, right. I meant, I meant the golf. I was you take it back. Would right. you go to the golf course? <laughs> they might be calling, by the way. <laughs> we gave them your name. <laughs> that that reminds me of my wife. Our favorite um, illegal hobby. It's semi illegal. It's 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 more like it's not illegal. It's, it's frowned upon. It's frowned upon, but we like to go to golf courses and rent a golf cart, but not play golf. We just like to drive around and fuck around and drink. You can do that? Yeah. What are they going to say? No. You go in, the, you go in the, the shop where they rent the golf course. Don't you have to pay for a round of golf, though? They never ask. I just go in and go, yeah, I need a cart. He's like, cool, give me your license. I'm like, here, 15 bucks, I got a cart. And then we just go out and we drive around. We go by the guy that, what is he called, a marshal or something? Uh -huh. Right past him. He's always like, he's always like some 19-year-old kid. He's like, hey. And I'm like, eh. And we just drive around a golf course and... and uh, um, find a drink cart, follow it around, get hammered. It's Did I tell you about, I, I went golfing at, uh, uh, over here on Peterson, and they have the, the stand-up scooter golf carts? Say what? All right, so. Segways? Like. Well, no, they they look like oversized scooters. So they're, um, they're it look, they look like a surfboard on wheels. So the front and the back have two wheels, but Why? they're closely going to. Um, it's. I don't know, I guess it's because it's fun. So it has a spot, you put your bag on the front, and then you have to stand up the whole time, and you can still ride around. And, that defeats the whole purpose of a golf cart. And you have to lean into the turns. And so I, I go, oh, that's pretty cool. Did you rent one? Yeah. And and uh, and and <laughs> I go, that's pretty cool. I go, uh, I, I'm a, how much is that? I want to try that. You got one of those available? And the guy goes, uh... uh have you ever ridden one of these? I don't know. Wow. You mean like he looked at you and sized yeah. you up and said, nah, yeah. not you, buddy. And, he, and he's like, he said, uh, I, I, you know, it's they're, they're harder than they look to ride. I'm like, oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Give me the damn thing. Was so it? he brings it out and he showed me the controls. And he goes, you sure about this? I said, will you stop? Just fine. So I get on the thing and I hit the start button and I went four feet and fell on my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Did he look at you? Did he slow clap? Yeah, a little bit. Oh man! And so then, I was like, after that, I had to figure out how to do it. So I, yeah, I you did, can't go back. No. So I, I went ahead and did it, and uh, and after you get the hang of it, it's pretty fun. Going up and down hills gets to be a little weird because you have you, you can't turn the wheel. You have to lean. Yeah, and then that's the wheels a big turn. no for me. Yeah, it's a big and no. So it gets to be. So I, I use it the last couple of times. It's, I, it's, it is a lot of fun, but. Are there still golf courses where you walk? Oh, yeah. Most of the time I walk. Okay. The ones around here, the nine-hole courses are walk. Yeah. Most 18-hole courses, you have to take a cart. Hmm. Except the professionals. We're thinking about taking High school kids can walk, but they won't let guys our age or size walk. 
because they'll tell you you got to be able to do the run. Takes it's, too long. It takes too long. They, you, you I mean, my stride is like up. four and a half inches, <laughs> so it took me two years to go to hold a hole. Usually, the only time I play eighteen holes anymore is when I go to a golf uh, outing, and th- and those you're required to have. A, you, you have <sighs> card comes with it. But anyway, um, so I had some other topics. Unless well, you have, do you have, do you have I time? did. I watched the Monument Men today. Oh, finally! I've never watched it before. Is this the movie? Yeah, or the, the movie. documentary. No, the movie. All right. Um, I haven't seen the documentary. I assume it's better because how could it not be? And and it just struck me as this is a that is a perfect example of a movie that does it wrong. So you've seen it, right? I have. Yes. With uh, George Clooney and. And you know the game, John Goodman. And... Yeah. Their problem was they tried to tell the whole story, right? Well, and they tried to be funny. Being funny is no big deal. They weren't, but I mean, it's hard to make Nazis war criminals funny. I mean, <laughs> it's a little tough, yeah. Um, but uh, what they should have done was they told they should have picked one piece of art. And told the story of them trying to get that one piece of art. And then they would have been able to tell the whole story through that one episode, right? Mm-hmm. Instead, they tried to tell everything. And it was just, it was all over the place. And it was really boring. And I was very disappointed. And, uh, gee, I guess that's everything. <laughs> well, I saw. That's my whole review. Thank I you. Come again next week. Came out. And, yeah, and I, uh, I'm a big fan of World War II movies. And, yeah, I didn't like it. I, I thought it was, uh silly and it was it it's it was because i mean you realize monuments that was all real those people yeah, were all yeah. real and it was a, a very interesting topic during a very serious time and they tried to make a silly movie out of it they tried to do it they tried to do a like a ocean's 11 type of thing right exactly you know which you know what i think i think they tried to do a men looking at goats, uh, you know, George Clooney f- performance. That was a funny movie. It was, but I, they and a true they, story. No. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Read. Look it up. Men staring that. at goats is a true story. I didn't know that, but the, yeah. they they tried to make, especially George Clooney's character, but all of them really, because that is a really a dumb topic, and if it's true, those were very dumb people, that they. They tried to make it look more serious, which added to the comedy element of it. And I thought that that movie, even though it, it when I first saw it, I was like, this is going to be an idiotic movie, was very funny. And this, they tried to do the opposite. They tried to take an interesting topic and a serious time and make it silly. And They should have gone one way or the other because they tried to do both. Yeah. They tried to be very serious and moving and very funny. And you know what? They shouldn't have done that. No, they shouldn't have. They should have picked one. And, uh, yeah, I forgot what I was. Oh, I was doing my, I have, I have been, uh, and since the last time we talked, I have been, uh, uh, both back on the horse, so to speak. You actually went on a horse? No, working. Oh. And, uh, I've gotten a lot of work done, but at the same time, I have also, um, because I don't have any actual deadlines from clients or anything anymore. Yeah. Um, I am binge watching a lot of television. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I realized to, I realized yesterday, it was two in the morning, and I finished up like this British detective thing, right? And I'm like, holy fuck! I just spent the whole day watching this. Like, I watched it started in the afternoon, and I finished it two in the morning. I watched the entire thing, wow. and I'm like, that's a poor use of my time, right there. I think this is a, you know, our show theoretically is about guys our age and what we do with our time now that we have so much of it. And I think I think there's a a real good chance that that's a thing a lot of guys do is they just end up watching TV forever. Yeah, you know? I, mean, I, I actually I find myself TV? I find myself doing it, but I I after a couple hours I start going all right I uh, I should not be I, I, I've been doing this too long I, you know I, lately I've been on this this thing where I've been rewatching NCIS again I don't know why. Uh, is it because that dude died? And even that, yeah, actually, that's that is why. <laughs> that is why, because David uh, was he the sunglasses guy? Oh no, that's a different show, isn't it? 
I think so. Right. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? David McAllister? Something like that. Mm. McAllen? Yeah, McAllen. I got I got sucked in a bunch of uh, into all these British detective shows, and really they're really good, man. They're really so. Good. I started with Endeavor, and I watched nine seasons of Endeavor. All right, and then the end really, really pissed me off. Like I was like, I don't usually get invested in a TV show, but, and I was like, this is pretty good. But at the end, I was like, when, you know, spoilers, but it's hard to tell if the lead detective in the story killed himself at the end or not. It's ambiguous, and I'm not happy about that. Because uh-huh. I'm like, I think he did. But then I look up online, because I'm a nerd and I do that, and everyone's like, no, he didn't. And I'm like, hmm, I think that was a dream sequence, buddy. And uh, I was really pissed off by that. But I just, I got sucked into all these things. You know what? I got to quit, man. I, I got to, you know what I got to do? I got to come here and work, because at least the only thing I'm addicted to here is a cigar. But Jesus Christ, at home, I'm just on the TV the whole time. Yeah. You know? I don't know how many guys, when they retire, and I'm not retired, but I live like a retired person, all right? And I don't know how many guys just lose the thread of, like, purpose when they get retired. Like, they just, like, diffuse out. Like, they have no purpose, you know? Well, I, I'm, I'm not very worried about it. Like, I had plans for retired to start to do stuff, some of which I have not done. Like, I haven't done any photography, which I plan to do. Yeah, and some of which I wanted to do more of, like writing, which I have. But usually, I end up either doing the stuff I have to do for the restaurant reviews, and then that's it. I don't. I go off to do something else. The only thing I have been doing regularly is I've been doing the work in the yard that I want to do. I've been doing woodworking, but I've been screwing up a lot of stuff. Which that's how you learn, though. Yeah, that's. that's the, I keep telling myself that screwing something up is not. You need to go on my Facebook feed. I'll try to introduce you guys and look for a guy named Spencer Hammond. All right, he runs a uh, he's a he's a professional woodworker. He's actually a luthier, and he runs a shop in Kenosha or somewhere near Kenosha. And he has every single piece of equipment in his shop was made in like 1911. Like he wow. runs all this in crazy like antiquated wood. Qu- you would freaking love it, man. Yeah, yeah, it's your kind of thing. So, but I, I could see how you could, you could lose a thread. There are, there are times like uh, yesterday was a perfect example. I, I had some things to do. Uh, actually, we went out to this bakery right down here, Needs and Wants. And Annie and I went out uh, for coffee when she was on her way to work. And I told her, I said, the, uh, our toaster oven broke. Uh, it didn't break, but it wasn't, it wasn't. It's old and it was not making good toast. <coughs> so I said, I'm going to go get a toaster oven. So her thing was, I said, you know what? If I'm going to buy one, I'm going to get one of those ones that does air frying too. You know, I'm going to go to Best Buy. She goes, don't get one of those huge things that's going to take up the counter space. Because this is one of those things we can't put away like we can put you away. You did though, didn't you? So I got this thing. It's the same. It's actually not as tall as our old toaster oven. It was, it's very low. You can put a pizza in there. It's got an air fryer basket and stuff, but it's, it's only about five, six inches tall. But it takes up most of the counter space. <laughs> so she comes home and she's like, look at this. Now we have even less counter space. Look at it. It takes up. And I go, no, no, no. Because I bought the Ninja thing. I said, watch this. And so it stands up on it. It's got a, it's got a, a thing on the back that rotates so you stand it up against the wall and I said and look here there's a button here you click this for easy cleaning yes. <laughs> easy cleaning damn, that, that'll really impress the shit out of my wife those are those words that get you in the sack man. so uh have you uh, used the air fryer air fryer thing yet I did last night yeah. I, I I can't we got one and I cannot figure out how to make it work Oh, no, I made chicken breast. It came out really good. Really? I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I, well, I, there's, like, YouTube videos and shit. I'm not going to watch it straight. Actually, I'm a man, gonna, am I? My, my wife's going out to dinner with friends, so today I'm going to try uh, chicken wings. I haven't made good chicken wings at home in a long time. I made a... All right, see, and it, it, it infects our conversation here, too. All right? Because we end up just talking about... I mean, our show is us talking about dumb shit, but 
I'm not going to go into my cooking stuff because that would be really just oh, okay. ridiculous, you know? Well, wait, I did have a topic. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, oh, first of all, uh, pumpkin spice malort. There's no such thing. It's It just started serving it at their, uh, at their uh, distillery for the month of October. I don't understand Chicago's fascination with that fucking drink. I don't know, but I'm gonna try and get a bottle of it so we can bring it to the studio. I, I don't I don't understand it. I I don't understand. You've had Malort, right? No. Okay. So for those of you who haven't had it, like Dave, imagine if a possum ate a skunk and then yeah. was hit by a car and was left to dry as roadkill and then was ground up and turned into an alcoholic beverage of some kind that you fed to a horse who peed it out into a bucket. That's what Malort tastes like. But there's, isn't there, I mean, I think it's geared towards 20-somethings who are, didn't, what did we have? We had that Jägermeister. Yeah, but Jägermeister has like, it, it's a little overpowering, but it's also sort of pleasant, right? Malort, there's nothing about it that's good. Nothing. It tastes terrible. <laughs> All right. right. It tastes terrible. And it, I mean, it does get you kind of drunk, but like there's a I have a dive bar so, that I love yeah. rubbing alcohol gets you drunk yeah, so, yeah. yeah I mean cologne will get you drunk there's a bar on Devon Avenue in the middle of uh, in the middle of an Islamic community all right and there's a dive bar it's been there since 1935 so they're in a community where nobody drinks and uh, and I love this dive bar it is called Carrie's and it is fantastic and uh, uh, and they are like the principal Malort place in Chicago. Like, they have Malorta Palooza there. <laughs> they serve Malort um, uh, uh, margaritas. They do Malort. It's it's crazy. And, uh, you know, I've, I I go there, and the, the whole bar is drinking Malort. And I'm like, what the fuck, man? It's like self-punishment. It's like flagellation. I don't get it. It's, wow. it's an awful fucking thing. I don't know why somebody said that. We heard someone in the background just admitted that they're crazy. And uh, that's not what our show's about. So. All right. All right. I got another topic. Uh, you used to, uh, back in the days when you were a real writer. Yeah, you, man, go uh, fuck yourself. You worked at newspapers, right? Yeah. Did you ever... Now, we've had to... We used to have this discussion a lot of times uh, uh, when I would complain about the media, which we don't do much anymore. We yeah. We do that more. But uh, it's no you, fun now that I'm complaining about them too. But you made you you made the you made the point over and over again that people who write stories don't write headlines. That editors write headlines. That used to be true, and in major newspapers, that's probably I, still I, true. I actually, I I just I heard somebody talking about it saying it was still true. But um, anyway, there was a there was a story in Daily Caller. Yeah, Daily Caller. That the headline right away got me and i'm like okay now i, I mean they write headlines to, to pull people into the story yeah right? yeah it's not the really to tell you what the story is about it's, i mean i mean it is you want it to do both yeah so uh so the headline is uh man accidentally shoots his 12 year old grandson while officiating a wedding i saw that headline and i refused to click on it <laughs> i, I refused I brought to click it to it. you yeah it's <laughs> First of all, how sad. But beyond that, I mean... Well, he wasn't killed. So, the guy who was officiating a wet wedding, should we say his name? I mean, why not? Michael Gardner. Oh, that motherfucker. I used, I used to have a police officer that was terrible. That was funny. Uh, he wanted to gain everybody's attention by firing a Pieta Model 1860 snub nose revolver in the air. Oh, that's a beautiful gun. Uh, Couldn't you just shout, hey? <laughs> Unfortunately, he fumbled with the firearm while cocking back the hammer, causing it to discharge. The bullet struck his young grandson in the shoulder. Jesus Christ. Despite being the, the gun being loaded with blanks, the force was still sufficient to inflict a serious injury on the child. And the blanks were homemade, filled with black powder. And oh, my God. Blue. Okay, so to everyone listening... Whether they're homemade or purchased, blanks are dangerous. Yes. Wasn't there an actor killed by using a blank? That Bruce Bruce Lee's son yeah. was killed. Yeah. Brandon yeah. Lee, right? Brandon Lee was killed. 
Yeah, another great career cut short. Stupid firearm. Yeah, because he did that to himself because he thought blanks were not dangerous. Well, that's most the, the most of the story. The truth is, there was an actual bullet lodged in the barrel, and really? so the, the blank shot out the actual bullet. It's over here. I never heard that. Yeah, so the gun had been fired previously with an actual bullet, and they didn't clear it. And uh, when they put the blank in it, it, it the force shot the actual bullet out. So, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So it was a blank, but it was also an actual bullet. And why do I have that knowledge? <coughs> I, I, you know, anyway, I just I, I I saw that was a headline that caught my attention, and I still belong to the Alumni Association for the Orlando Sentinel, and they they constantly what they post <coughs> most of all is stupid headlines, and. Uh, it's just uh... all right. I got another question for you, and I don't know if we should talk about this. Yeah, of course we should. Uh, buying YouTube views. We Say need it again. Buying YouTube views. What about it? We need to get our YouTube channel up and running. I don't We're have any money. any money. I don't have any money to it's use. It's actually to... not that expensive. Well, I I don't have any money at all. All right. So but here's my question: Is it ethical? Who cares? Yes, can, it's ethical. You know why? why? It's a product and you're advertising it. That's yeah. what it is. Uh, you know? So. But the it, more important question is, is it, um, is it effective? And the answer to that is no. And here's why. Um, if you purchase YouTube views, it's, it's like purchasing Twitter followers. They're not real. And so in the long run, they don't do anything for you because the whole purpose is for them to purchase things or to pay attention to the page, but they don't do that because they're, most of them aren't even real. And the ones that are real, they're just part of a farm. So if you purchase YouTube views, they're not gonna, you're gonna get higher views, but they don't click on advertising. And the whole point is to get advertising and have yeah, people Yeah, we're, we're just starting out. We, wouldn't that lead to other more organic views? I, I think. The key is, is like, maybe. Right, so how, how do some of these people, all right. I think it's I smarter mean, to spend money on advertising and advertise a YouTube channel to people that are likely to, but to view I, it. I, I don't even know how to do that. Yeah, it's a, Usually like it's, a Facebook advertisement or, or something. You just advertise your video. All right, I'll look for that. Yeah, but hey, I just want to tell you, I, I'm broke. I don't have a dime for this stuff, man. No, Since I fine. quit working, I don't get. I don't get nothing. <laughs> I, I bought that hat. I spent like eight dollars on it, and I lost it. I'm not buying another hat. No, no, right? I, that's fine. I, what I was looking at these things are like twenty bucks to, to get. Yeah, well, I mean, you get what get you pay 2, for. Two thousand know. views. The best thing to do is to go on Fiverr and get somebody who knows what they're doing, and pay them to do it. Fiverr. Fiverr. Oh. And uh, because figuring it all out is like, it's like learn. I don't know about you, but I don't want to learn a lot of new things. All right, I'm a little tired. I'm a little done with that. I'd rather just hire somebody to do it. Well, but our our website's down too. We got to figure out what to do about that. You just have to point it. When we're done here, we'll right. talk about it. And maybe uh, tonight or tomorrow, or something we can. Because I already work. paid for a couple of these websites for a year, so yeah. To my, tonight or tomorrow, we can go online together, and I'll show you where to point it because it's still up. Oh, it's just not pointed there anymore because we because Dine One One went down. Yeah, so where's it? So where would you point it to? Well, all right, we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Yeah, we're um, actually. I mean, we could. I don't have any other topics. If you, I'm, we could just uh, uh, end the uh, podcast and sit here and smoke. I'm always happy to talk about author stuff. You know, author stuff. Yeah, I am an author. Hey, have you ever used WaveMaker? No, I don't know what that is. It's an app uh, like Scrivener, but uh, it allows you to. Um, work online and offline it's like a stripped down Scrivener yeah I don't I mean I've got Scrivener so I wouldn't I don't really look at other apps yeah. I, once I got an app that works I don't care I don't look at new ones anymore you still use Scrivener then? yeah I love Scrivener I think Scrivener is brilliant well I was thinking in terms of if, if we're going to do B Cops Guide 2 the problem is doing with Scrivener you can't work with a collaboratively yeah it isn't collaborative so with wave maker you can do it collaboratively 
But it's, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Like, if, if we both use Grivner, you can just send me your files and I'll drop them into, like, like, one of us can maintain the permanent file. And if you write something, you can send it to me and I can drop it in. Or you know, we can and, keep it in Dropbox. Yeah. And then, if, yeah. And then, we just do the whole thing in Google Sheets. And when we're done, I can drop it in somewhere. And there's no reason to spend money in an app. But if you want to, go ahead. Well, it's free. Oh, it's free? Yeah. yeah. No, it's not. Well, is it, I'm sure it's advertising or something. Yeah. Pass. Pass. I already have enough distractions, man. <clears throat> All right. Well, what other author stuff do you have? Well, um, you know, I have this. What's going on at Whiskey? Uh... All American Whiskey? Yeah. Ooh. We're working on sponsorships. I just finished our media kit, and uh, we're up to like 12,000 views a month. And uh, um, so we're getting really close to where we can um, we can make some money. And, we uh, could do some sponsors here. Sam Pellegrino, the yeah, official. Right there, buddy. Honor. So, but we're not going to do advertising. Um, we're going to we're following the clue of this amazing online magazine and print magazine called The Bitter Southerner. It's a beautiful, beautiful website and magazine, and um, they're doing for the South, the contemporary South, what we want to do for whiskey. And it, they're a very literate magazine. They're, they're it's great journalism, um, feature journalism, and uh, and so. But what they do is you can advertise you can sponsor a series of stories and so for like two grand all you get is your name at the top that says sponsored by that's it no pictures no nothing sponsored by san pellegrino but they they get a lot of hits and so it's worth the money and uh, that is that is going to be our our model and so the first thing we're doing is this section called death by dive bar and what happens is we're going to get real writers to go out to a dive bar and write a love letter to that dive bar and to dive bars in general, oh. and the f and we're gonna get we're working on getting this uh, new whiskey from Milam and Green called Unabridged um, to sponsor because come on it's Unabridged it's already literary, and uh, we have a good relationship with those guys. But they have a distiller who is the, the blender of the year this year, Heather Green. She's amazing, and we want to get her to write the first one. And uh, there's already a couple up, but they don't really count. And uh, but that's gonna be our first our first thing and uh, after that uh, hopefully we'll get a lot more sponsorships in there so, so you can just google all american whiskey and see it yeah yeah well we've only got a couple on the death by dive bar page right yeah, now but all american whiskey all american whiskey.com yeah it's uh we don't review whiskey which is a weird thing but um we're doing pretty good even though we don't review whiskey because people that drink with our market is not people that never had whiskey before our market is people who are already drinking whiskey and aren't it's kind of like what we do with jeremiah creek right we're looking at life through the lens of people that are post-retirement age or getting there all american whiskey looks at the world through the lens of whiskey but we don't review whiskey yeah. we write about the people that make it and we write about the things that are adjacent to it and uh, it it is working out Oh, that's you know, it's working out really well. But the author thing that I'm doing is is I have a new book sitting there. I haven't published it yet. Fat in Paris. It's just sitting there. It's a travel memoir like Full English was. It's pretty funny. It's gotten good reviews in the people that have reviewed it so far. Um, and uh, um, I've been trying to think of how do I sell this book. So for, when you and I had our book out, what was our best way to sell books? In person. In person. Every time. For me, the best, the most money I've made was for somebody else. And that was for, um, can't remember his name right now, <laughs> uh, Mark Greenberg. And uh, he wrote a book about the Civil War in Illinois. And uh, I did an event for him. Remember the Oxford English Dictionary? Yeah. I had a photographer. I had all the snacks. It was a good event, right? I made money on that. He sold 25 books. So he not only made money from the event, but he made money from the book sales too, plus 25 books. Mm -hmm. And uh, I realized that that is a ticketed event is the best way to do this. And so I've decided that that's what I'm gonna do for Fat in Paris. I'm but, not gonna go to libraries. I'm not gonna do anything like that. I'm gonna have like a one man show type of thing. And uh, the tickets include one or two copies of the book. And, uh, and so I've already, I've got a place to practice it. And then a stage two place that's kind of small. And after that, um, 
there's a guy who used to put on burlesque shows and stuff in, in Chicago, and I'm going to get him to uh, book me in different places or just find a theater and have a permanent show in that theater. Hmm. It's uh, kind of crazy, but you know what? Um, you can't download a live event. Yeah. And AI can't fucking write a live event or do it. And uh, if, if a place like that, if I get it sponsored by whiskey and, and wine and, and have some snacks in there and everything, I can make some money on that. Yeah, you can just cross marketing with, with uh, wine styles or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Get all these uh, wine places in town, all these distilleries in town to, 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 to sponsor it. Fuck yeah, man. And, uh, and I know a lot of those guys now, so that's my crazy thing I'm working on. Well, good luck, man. I wanna, I'll go. Your I'll tickets will be extra. <laughs> I remember right. one time you were at one of our Eat Him Gets a Price events, and my friend was like, uh, we don't have enough chicken. And I'm like, what do you mean we don't? He goes, we're too short. I'm like, well, what the fuck, man? We counted. And he goes, yeah, I don't know what happened. And he's like, listen, isn't that your friend here? I'm like, yeah. And he goes, you think he'd go without chicken? I'm like, are you fucking, it's his birthday. He's like, yeah, I shouldn't have asked. I'm like, yeah, no, you shouldn't have asked. <laughs> Like I can't believe you asked. I think I may have asked you. Did I? I no. would have. I would have been fine with it. I don't yeah, remember. Yeah, I would not. There's no way. I, I, what would you do? I, I don't remember what we did. Somebody went without. I think he found a vegetarian or something like that, and said, "Hey, we don't have enough chickens." They're like, "Hey, I don't care." That was the one where you had to break it with a hammer. Yeah. Remember that? Can I get your fire again? Yeah. So, all right. So I think that's that's all we got for this week. Uh, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch over to the logo again as we say goodbye. So, join us next week. Tell your friends to to go look for Jeremiah Creek, and I think we'll also upload this to Beacon's Guide again until we get more uh, subscribers. Oh, hit the subscribe button.